Look at how curly my hair is. I've been trying some new things. Hi, my name's Hannah. I am a Christo pagan witch, and yes, I have videos that explain what that means. So don't come for me if you're not educated, okay? I have made videos in the past about some mistakes that I've made in my craft, but today I thought it would be a good idea to go all the way back to the beginning and discuss some things that I wish I would have done differently if I could do it all over again. Not necessarily mistakes, just things that maybe I would tweak a little bit, things that I would do just a little bit differently that may have benefited me when I was in the very beginning stages. So if you're kind of in that same boat, hopefully this will help you a little bit. The first thing, <laughs> What you're gonna hear every witch just about say is, I wish I would have done more research. Um, I had always been intrigued by witchcraft, but I didn't really like get into it. I had always been spiritual. Like um, I was raised in an environment where like talking to angels is perfectly permissible. And some denominations of Christianity don't believe that God talks back. I was raised to believe that he talked back. We just had to listen or look for signs or things like that. So I feel like my psychic abilities were pretty in tune by the time I started to take on the title of witch. But I first found, you know, Christian witchcraft online and then dove into witch talk. Now this was in the very heat of lockdown, like right in the middle of that. So, I mean, I, I feel like witch talk was a lot more educational and fun back then. And now it's just kind of a clusterfuck. <coughs> it's a disaster, but you're a part of it. Yes. Uh, but I digress. I found witch talk and I was in the broom closet, but I was so intrigued by this. I remember <laughs> there was a time where Every night before I would go to bed, I would stick in my headphones and just watch witch talk compilations here on YouTube. I didn't even have a TikTok account. I would just watch compilations every night and then finally made an account. Um, but I, I did read some books. I did do research in other areas, but I read like three books <laughs> and then really dove headfirst into spell work like two months into my craft. Now granted, I don't necessarily think you have to do the whole Wiccan idea of, oh, you need to wait a year and a day before you can really start practicing. I don't necessarily believe that, but maybe a little more than two months and a couple books and witch talk. Granted, again, I was in the broom closet, so it was a little hard to have books. You know, I could only stuff so many books in my backpack or my closet. I did have the Kindle app on my phone, so that was really helpful, but I was trying to do what I could while keeping my craft kind of hidden. But this brings me into my next point in that I wish I would have established better protections before diving right into spell work. Uh, now, I know a lot of people are going to ask, well, you're a Christian witch, so don't you believe that God is going to protect you? Yes, but just like any other deity, you know, your deities are going to protect you. But if you do something stupid, uh, they will let you face the consequences. Or in the case of God, who is very sassy, by the way, Jesus especially. I mean, where do you guys think he gets it from? Have you read the New Testament? Um, God... You know, if some negative energy comes my way, we'll be like, are you smart enough to do something about it? Now, granted, when I first dove into spell work, I was doing really innocent spells like healing, mental clarity, peace, like very beginner level appropriate spells, I would say. So I feel like because it was so innocent, maybe that's why God didn't let it come back to bite me in the ass. Um, and as soon as I learned how to do protections, I was doing that. I would cleanse my space before doing every spell. Like, I, I definitely did all of the right things once I learned how to, but I definitely should have been doing that prior to doing spell work, just in case, you know, something else came through. At the time, I was only working with the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 
Uh, I was still learning about Asherah, but she wasn't quite a part of my practice yet. Um, so very like safe deities for me. Um, but you know, who knows? There, there could have been a, a trickster spirit that came through or an, an energy that I didn't know how to handle. Um, luckily that was not the case, but I, I still had of take, should have taken some more preventative measures to ensure that that wouldn't be the case. And I didn't. And I'm very lucky that it didn't come back to bite me in the ass. The next thing is I wish I would have put in more effort to make friends with other Christian witches right from the get go, uh, because I was mainly watching these witch talk compilations on YouTube. By the time I actually made a TikTok account, I wanted to follow the people that I saw in these compilations who at the time were like the top people of witch talk. So like a uh, chaotic witch aunt, eclectic karma. Those were the kinds of people that I followed once I made a TikTok account. Now, granted, the other like popular witch talkers who are Christian witches, um, Sarah Restressen, Lena Elsaya Lee, and Mimi Prada, I don't know when they started posting witchy content to witch talk, um, but it wasn't until it was like my senior year of college, which was a couple years into my practice and doing witch talk that Lena reached out to me and asked me to do an episode on her podcast, which is how we got to know each other really. Um, and then somewhere along the line, it may have even been after I moved to Indy that Sarah and I became mutuals and then eventually came Mimi. But it's also really only been in the last year, I think it was a little over a year ago, that Sarah reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do Witch Talk Bible Study, which we haven't done in a while just because life, Lena just had a baby, things like that. But that was what really kind of solidified our friendship and I'm still in a group chat with all three of them, we seriously talk every day. But I wish I would have done that sooner. And while I think it was good for me to educate myself on other areas of the craft, um, people who worshiped other deities, because at the time I was very ignorant about those things. I was like, people still worship the Greek gods? Like, I think it was good of me to find people like that and to learn about it and to educate myself. But I should have tried to establish a community of my own niche sooner. And this brings me to my next point, because if I had made friends with people in my specific niche um, and established that sense of community with other Christian witches and Christopagans, I would not have run into the next problem that I had as a beginner, which was I blew up on TikTok when I was still in the very beginning stages of my practice. And I know that you could argue that this has more to do with TikTok and my platform than it does with my craft, but it very much ble bleeds into that too. Um, because I had this platform all of a sudden and I was very open and honest about the fact that like, hey, I'm a beginner, I don't know everything, I'll answer the questions that I do know, but there's lots of things that I'm not gonna know. But again, had I made more friends and established a community from the get-go, it would have been more easier for me to be like, hey, I don't know the answer to this question, but this person who was also a Christian witch might know. Instead, I either just had to flat out say, I don't know, I'm sorry, or what I did in the most cases was I was scrambling to do as much research on this question as possible in order to answer these people's questions, which at times drew me away from my own practice that I was still trying to establish. So rather than doing research for me, I was doing research for other people, again, when I was still in the very beginning stages of my practice. And finally, I wish I would have established my shop, my business, later. Um, I, it wasn't like a cash grab, but you know, I, I was growing on TikTok and I was in a place where I was kind of lost, um, not only in changing my spiritual and religious beliefs, but also just, you know, I had changed my major from biology to sociology. And my original plan was to 
get a PhD and all this other stuff. And I just came to a point where I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. Like props to the people who do have PhDs and go to school for 12 years. Like that is incredible. But I just, I didn't want to be a career student. So I was still trying to figure out what to do with my life in this very niche major that is kind of difficult to find work in if you only have a bachelor's in sociology. Um, so I saw TikTok as a way for me to potentially build a career. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't a cash grab. It was me being a little egotistical and being like, oh yeah, I know enough about this to be able to create witchy products. Ah, I still think I could have done it eventually and I think I'm a lot more successful now and I know a lot more now. But it was another one of those things where I was scrambling to do research on spell candles and spell jars and all of the other things that I was trying to sell in order to accurately portray them to my audience because I didn't want to scam people. I wanted to make sure that I knew about these things and what they did before selling them to people. But again, it was one of those things where I was doing research for other people rather than for myself. And I still learned a lot along the way, but I should have taken more time to learn these things for myself and take more time to focus on my practice myself before trying to make these products and before trying to do research for other people. Um, and again, a lot of that kind of ties back into I wish I would have made friends sooner because then I could refer people to them and maybe have had other people in my life being like, hey, you sure you want to start a business right now? You sure you don't want to wait? Um, and granted, all of those things led me to where I am now, but I still wish I would have focused on myself more. And that's still something that I need to work on. You know, I do spells for clients all the time, but rarely do I do spells for me. And going into 2024, so it's a little, rate, little late for New Year's resolutions, um, but I want to start doing more magic for me going into the future. If you are in a similar situation where you maybe want to start on the path of Christian witchcraft, but you don't know where to start and you want to do that kind of research for you, my good friend Sarah Restressen and Mimi Prada, I, who I just mentioned earlier, wrote an incredible one-stop shop book on Christian witchcraft. Now granted, you should read multiple books from multiple places and do all kinds of research, but if you're looking for a level one place to start with like, oh, but doesn't the Bible say this? And how do I actually do Christian witchcraft? That is the book for you. And I recently did a collaboration with them um, where I have beginner Christian witch kits. So you can either buy the book and kit combo or just the individual kit from me. If you want to get just the individual book, you gotta get that from Sarah. But with that, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope that that has helped someone who is maybe in a similar situation to where I was back then. Make sure you subscribe, um, check out my Patreon. Uh, we don't just talk about Christian witchcraft on there, we talk about paganism and witchcraft of all kinds. Um, I have a podcast where we talk about all sorts of topics. Uh, my store, which is for witches and pagans of all kinds. So make sure you take a look at all of those things. Make sure you like this video, leave me a comment to let me know how you're feeling, how you liked it, and I will see you all on the next one. Bye.